Hey everyone, it's Blake, and I'm back, and I'm doing more with the machine learning, and now I'm starting to build it into other processes. So it's not just machine learning for machine learning's sake. I'm starting to really blend it in with other things. So for example, we've talked about VR a little bit, and so that's what I'm going to show today, is I have a, a setup to do in VR. This is actually my third time recording this video because the first time when I started up the VR it screwed up my audio. So I think I have all my audio settings squared away. Um, so should be good with that. And then we also have a little robot here. And so this is uh, based off the of Lego Mindstorms. Uh, my son and I put this together. So this is our two degree of freedom floppy bot. but with Lego Mindstorms. So the geometry, of course, is a little different, but we have the rotator down there and we have the flopper up here. So it can turn um, really closer to 180 than 360. This cable gets caught, you know, now that we're dealing with actual physical hardware, some of those limitations. Um, but this can go probably 270 degrees ish. I was able to get a C-sharp controller for the LEGO Mindstorms working, but it doesn't work inside of Unity. Ideally, it would have been great if I could have gotten everything to just go inside Unity. Looks like I'm going to have two programs. They're going to communicate over UDP, something like that. The code shouldn't be that bad. The big trick here is, you know, these are toy motors and whatnot, so, you know, doing calibration and trying to mimic the movement as best I can is probably going to require a lot of tweaking, but... I thought that it was at least cool that we can start along that um, along that topic. So um, that's one thing that we're going to do. And then also I was looking into automated recording of animation. So that might be something else that we can do as well. So all that said, uh, I want to get started and let's show you uh, what is going on with the VR setup because it really wasn't that hard to do. So first thing I'm going to do just give myself some more screen real estate and I'm going to be bouncing around and moving the camera and stuff so uh, I'm going to ask you to bear with me as I move some of these around. So I'm going to turn off the camera for now so everybody should be able to see much more of my screen as I give a tour of this project. So again um, I was going to put this together live but I had microphone issues so I didn't but uh, basically what I did, and really wasn't that hard, was I took my five degree of freedom robot, here it is, this one, I duplicated this scene, and so I just made this five DOF VR, so this is my current scene, and I had a scenes in there, uh, so I open up that scene, oh man, and I did the work in the wrong scene, look at that, oh classy, all right. Not all is lost, actually. So what I can do is... I can't believe I did that. Well, I get to fix this live. Do, 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 do. All right. Uh, we're going to go in here into this scene. And so we're going to call that uh, Robot Arm VR. And then we can just... Drag and drop this into the 5 off, And then we'll go into the 5 off scenes. And then there should be two, right? 5 off, and that's the R. So this one should go back into that one's scenes. OK. So let's try this again. 5 off VR, scenes, robot. Hey, look at that. OK. Um, I'll save that. I'll be sure to push that up. Um, so, created that scene, and then I went to the Asset Store, and I got the uh, Steam VR plugin. So if you just go in here and do Steam VR, the nice thing about the Steam VR plugin is it is multi-platform, so it'll work with HTC Vive or Oculus Rift. I'm not sure about Windows Mixed Reality. I know Steam is doing a lot to do compatibility with Windows Mixed Reality. I don't know if they've gotten this asset up so that it's doing that cleanly. But um, at the very least, you download this, you import it, and then you get a whole bunch of stuff in your 
uh, assets folder, right? So here's the Steam VR. You go into prefabs and you grab a camera rig and you drag a camera rig into your scene. And this camera rig is what will define the home. So you set your transform of your camera rig to 000. zero, zero. And that will put this box in there. And now this camera rig is configured for my play space. And you'll see that when I turn the camera back on and rotate it over so you can see what's going on. Um, this is calibrated for my play space. Um, you can actually change. Oh, by default, it's at 300 by 225. So you can change it between calibrated and uh, various sizes. Okay, so it turns out I was absolutely wrong when I sang that. Um, you build a floor. Uh, part of the reason you put a floor in anytime you do anything with VR, uh, you should have a floor. And part of the reason there is just the human brain is used to having floors because we've had floors our entire lives. Um, and that gives a sense of um, comfort when moving around. Actually, it's not that it gives a sense of comfort, it just avoids a sense of discomfort by not having floor. Um, if you don't have a floor in VR, what happens is people begin to not want to move, right? It's, it's a very good way to kind of root them in place if you don't have a floor. So we have a floor. <clears throat> we have the lighting and we have all the default lighting and stuff. One of these days, I'm probably going to do a quick little project on like how to make a simple cube look good in Unity. You know, basically getting away from all the defaults and turning things up. Because a lot of the folks that, you know, we're working with here are, have higher end graphics cards and can afford to make things look really nice. Um, you know, we can worry about optimizing for various platforms later. So, um, we can make this look a lot nicer. That said, what else did I do? So, one of the other important things that I did was because this was based off of another scene and I had that scene's prefabs, I broke those prefabs because I didn't want to make the changes I was about to make here to reflect back on that original scene. So went up to this, like this robot arm environment, five off, you go to game object, and in this case it's already been done, so you can't select break prefab instance. But this is kind of key because I wanted to make changes here without screwing up the prefab in the original scene. So by doing that, my prefab is separate, and then I can muck with it as I needed to. Uh, five Duff Arm, I reduced the speed to 30. Because this is going to be in a human space, we want the movement to be kind of at human speeds, right? We were moving around super fast before, just zipping around everywhere, and it wasn't really happening at human speed. The next thing we want to look at, okay, so main camera, that gets deactivated because the VR has a camera. The VR camera rig has a camera in it, which is the headset, so you disable that. Um, this environment is pretty much the same. Also made some changes to the target. We'll get into that in a second. Uh, directional light, the same directional light. Robot Academy is the same Robot Academy. The brain fived off. I've gone ahead and moved this over to internal, and I've used the machine learning settings that we got out of TensorFlow. The floor is just that, it's a floor, and I have it configured to the size. Uh, one of these days I just need to write a script that would scale the floor at startup to be whatever size that the running room is, but fine, whatever. Okay, so the target. Changed the target's behavior. Right now we're not keeping score, so I got rid of any of the events going on at on hit. And then I also added this follow script. This follow script is one of those scripts that I write a bajillion times. And let me move this around. I actually run 4K natively. Um, so that's why sometimes I have to move everything over to this window because I don't want to broadcast in 4K. Um, this is one of those stupid simple scripts. I've written it probably a dozen times. And one of these days I'm just going to write a Unity uh, asset package and just have it available, put it up on the asset store for free. That's all the dumb things like this that I just constantly end up rewriting. So this is a follow script. It has a target and it has an offset, right? So this is, you want to follow something, but maybe slightly above it or slightly below it. And so you just pick your target transforms position and then you add an offset. Um, in this case, the offset is zero. 
and the target is the right hand controller. Um, I originally put this on the headset, which was both cool and also highly disconcerting. When you have this robot arm that's like reaching for your face, um, it was really cool in that it was um, uh, uh, uncomfortable having this thing follow you around and, and try to hit you in the face. Um, so it was kind of neat uh, in, in as much as it was also just really... Uh, weird to have happen. So in this case, now it's following my hand and you can also see the target. I kept the uh, renderer on. So yeah, there it is. So I kept the renderer on so you can see the, the ball in the hand and you can see that it's reaching for the ball. So this would be great for, you know, any kind of like treat. It, it very clearly looks like uh, a, a critter going for a treat, which I think is just absolutely fantastic. So if I hit play here, and hopefully my controllers haven't gone to sleep, although I think they have. Um, when I hit play, yep, my controllers have gone to sleep, and you'll see that it's just kind of idling because there's no target for it to get to. So it's just looking around randomly, um, which is interesting. Oh, no, there's the target. Uh, it is trying to get to that target. Oh, and the target's way on the floor where I can't reach it, so I can't go. So if I move this around, Now we have the controller, and you can see that. So, um, Mark, so the other thing is, if it reaches the controller, nothing happens, right? I'm not doing anything with that event. So let me go ahead. I'm going to turn the camera back on, and I'm going to move this over here. So pardon me as I readjust things. That's pretty good. And then I'm going to switch over to the Vive microphone. So you should still hear me now. Yep, audio levels look good. Okay. So I'm going to put this on. Oh, <laughs> this is my right hand. So you can see at 30 degrees a second, which is my current frame rate, it makes this act at slightly slower than human speed, right? So I can move out of its way faster than it is able to get me. Right, and sometimes it moves around and gets caught. But again, if I just twitch a little bit, it comes right for me. So this is really, really quite good. All right. So some of you may know, um, I have also made the game Don't Get Hit in the Face on Steam, which, you know, it's just a cute little game jam, little experimental game that I put together and it worked fine. So just to get an idea of kind of what this is like when you set it up to the headset. So in the camera rig, there's the camera head and there's the eye. And so our target, instead of following the controller, is going to follow the eye camera. And then we'll start that up. And again, you should see the ball show up in VR. And let me see. Let's, again, there we go. Make that bigger. And already, even though I'm outside of its range, I can tell it's trying to get to me. Oh, it's caught in a loop. It still happens every now and then. Yeah. And then like dodge and run away like <laughs> ah, it got me <laughs> so oh that's really ominous actually looking up and seeing it like hover and, and try to hit me so um as silly as this is you know when I mean, it's really going after you <clears throat> especially if you have to move your whole body like 30 degrees a second is 
rather quick. And I can see the shadow of the target on me right now. Um, so when it really goes for you, it, it really goes for you, which is kind of cool and disconcerting at the same time. Um, and I can't get away from it. So again, if you're making a game based off of this, um, you're going to have to tweak these a fair amount for whatever it is uh, that you're doing. You know, I know one person mentioned that they're talking about doing a um, sword fighting game, right, where the the bot may be sword fighting with them. And uh, so it's really easy to get to superhuman speeds. So, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, boy, there is a sweet zone where it just really goes after you. Um, some places it goes after you more than others. But... Um, Anyway, I thought this was fun. I thought this was cool. Um, people seem to be uh, interested in what I'm doing with this. So this is one use case for having these kinds of algorithms. And again, what's cool here is that this isn't animated by an animator. You know, this is something that's done. You know, this is animated by the machine learning algorithm. So um, it behaves very differently than what a lot of people think that a robot might work, how a robot might behave. Um, and in fact, it is different than how a lot of robots who are manually programmed do behave. So, um, okay, let me take this off. All right. So if anybody has any questions or thoughts, um, anything that they want to discuss when it comes to this machine learning stuff, please feel free to leave comments uh, below. I'll go ahead and do a latest brush. Oh, the other thing I did want to mention is that as much as it's waving around, it is much smoother um, than it was previously because we I did do a run where... In the five tough arm, you'll see we have this per degree penalty. And so this is for each degree of movement, it loses a 10,000th of a point. And this does help it not move around unless it has to. Um, now, again, you have to be careful with your these kinds of movement penalties because what happens is if the movement penalty becomes larger than your reward, then it will learn that doing nothing is better than failing at doing something. And you want it to be okay with doing something. So again, you gotta be careful with these levels because you don't wanna drown out um, your reward with this movement penalty. So, and then again, this per step penalty, this is to put some time pressure on the algorithm. So I've thought about some other things that I'd like to work on, maybe um, uh, adversarial type environment, maybe where we have two brains and they're doing something different, right? One's attacking, the other's defending, a uh, game like that. Or again, I can continue to keep doing use cases for, you know, once you have your basic ML stuff set up, you know, what do you want to do with it next? I can also go that direction. Um, I'm, you know, I'm having fun with this. This is a fun project to be working on. So. If people have anything that they want to see, I'm also flexible. Um, I don't have like some grand vision for this. Um, again, I might, I, I do have a game idea where I'd like to have robots doing things for people, and I didn't want to go through all the manual process of animating them, so I'll probably, uh, at the very least, show how you can use this and record and playback animations. Um, but if there's other things that people want to see, uh, just let me know, and I'll see if I can get it done. All right, thanks so much, and thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.